In this tutorial, we'll go over the basics of using Inkscape to develop a design for the Epilog Legend 36 EXT laser cutter. Note that Inkscape itself can't send a design directly to the laser cutter. Instead, we'll save the design as a PDF file, which we can send to the laser cutter using another application. Drawings for the laser cutter can have both vector lines where the laser will cut through the material and etched raster images that will be scanned onto the material, much like an inkjet printer scans an image onto paper line by line, but the scanning this time consists of etching with laser pulses. There are three critical points to consider when designing an object for the laser cutter. One, the drawing size must fit within the bed size of 36 inches by 24 inches, as well as it must fit within the size of your material. Two, cut lines must be pure red and have a thickness of 0.001 inches. Three, raster images should be grayscale. Here we'll show a simple example of a design with both vector cut lines and a raster image. We'll assume that we're using a piece of 8.5 by 11 landscape mode stock. We'll go to File and then Document Properties. And on the Page Setup tab, we'll change the default units from pixels to inches. Select the page size as 8.5 by 11, Landscape Mode, and change the units um, to inches for the uh, size. While we're on the uh, Document Properties, we'll set up a grid. We'll hit New Rectangular Grid. Change the grid units to be inches. And then we'll uh, set uh, the grid spacing to be a quarter inch, 0.5 for X, and a spacing of 0.25 for Y. And then we'll put a major grid line every four units. So we have grids every quarter inch, X and Y, uh, with thick lines every inch. Next, we'll click on Zoom to Fit Page. And then we'll use the Rectangle tool draw a rectangle, and we won't worry about the fact that it's uh, coming up blue with a black border. We can fix that later. We'll use the select, and that'll produce the handles, which we can use for resizing, um, or clicking in the middle of the object, we can move it. Now we're going to change the fill and stroke. If we click on the little uh, None X button on the lower left corner, that'll set the fill to None. And then if we shift click on red, that will change the uh, stroke to red. We'll select the object. And then go to Object, Fill and Stroke to examine the uh, properties of the uh, fill and stroke. So note that um, the stroke color is pure red. It's got a, a, a 255 value for RGB. Uh, if we look at the stroke style, change the units from uh, pixels to inches, we note that the width is 0.017, which is too wide. Uh, should be 0.001. We'll fix this later because it'll be hard to see the line if we make it that narrow. Note that we can pan by using uh, control and the arrow keys. And we can zoom in and out using uh, the plus and minus keys. You can also use uh, control uh, right button, or uh, I'm sorry, yes, control right but mouse button to zoom in, and shift uh, right mouse button to zoom out. Next, we'll add a uh, polygon. We'll click on the polygon tool, uh, change the number of corners to five so that we draw a pentagon. We'll add that and uh, resize it and rotate it around a bit. Next thing that we're going to do is bring in a uh, GIF image, a uh, bitmap image. So we'll click on Import under File, and then select a GIF image. Uh, choose Embed Mode. And here we'll put in that GIF. Note that it's uh, in color. We'll change that later. Now we'll draw a rectangle around our GIF image. 
And we can change that from a rectangle to a rounded rectangle uh, by clicking on the handle that's a circle in the top right hand corner. Okay, so now we have everything in the uh, design. We're ready to um, change its um, line style modes for printing. Uh, first we'll select the image and then filter it and change it to grayscale by filter, color, desaturate. Uh, not that obvious from the name that that's what it's going to do, but that's what it does. Now we'll go ahead and uh, select all of the objects that we have from edit, select all, or simply control A, or we can drag a box around all of the objects. Um, so we have all of our objects. We will um, shift click on the GIF image to deselect that. And now we'll go back to the um, object fill and stroke and we'll change the line width to 0.001. Uh, so first let's look at the uh, stroke paint and notice that it's red, pure red. Then we'll go to stroke style and change the width down to 0.001 and then hit return. So notice how our lines become much thinner, almost to the point where we can't see them. This is the reason why we're making the change at the very end. We'll deselect and, and turn off the grid. Under View, Grid, so that we can uh, see the objects a little better, but again, they're, uh, they're quite faint, which is why we draw with a wider style. Finally, uh, we'll save this as a PDF. Uh, now, we probably want to save the drawing uh, as an SVG file first so that we can edit it. Uh, we won't do that here. We'll go directly to saving it as a uh, PDF and save. Um, take the defaults, hit OK. And now we'll take a look at the PDF file in uh, Acrobat Reader. So there it is on the desktop, and we'll open it up. And lo and behold, that's our design, uh, which we're ready to send to the laser cutter.